now can we now go further in the in the instructions can you look still at verse 9 it is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning and the fire of the altar shall be burning where in the emphasis we want to draw now is the fire where is it burning is in it's not first external it's not first a fire on your on the outside where is it burning from inside he said the fire shall be burning in it so i want to note number one keep the fire burning where within and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning in it now let me illustrate this point quickly it is possible that during your quiet time a fire was kindled in your soul how will you keep it burning throughout the day imagine that as it happens sometimes as you step out from your devotion into your sitting room it is your wife that you first met and let's say she sarcastically remarks welcome oh man of god vegetable oil has finished in the kitchen you better do something about it all this prayer 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 do something reasonable about it before you dash out again in the pretense of serving god can that happen that when you thought you are just coming with fire immediately you are meeting a contradiction something that is con completely contrary she's like a fire extinguisher that morning how do you handle that how do you conduct yourself so that you do not lose your fire that is the issue we are looking at now i'm talking about how do i contain my fire inside such that the external environment no matter the contradiction it doesn't quench the fire in me how do i keep it how do i keep the fire burning within because this is the issue i'm raising with you now you know why you are here this is a good atmosphere where all of us are crying for fire am i right and if you were shouting and say oh my god oh my god oh my god fire fire the other brother says say, yes lord fire 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 but i can tell you when you go home you go to your yard he's oh god fire mm, fire fire somebody go and say excuse me stop disturbing us what fire are you talking about you are confused get out from here we don't i don't like that noise here how will you keep the fire burning in an atmosphere that is contrary that is not encouraging and i know when you come away from mlr you will enter into situations that is not passionate about what i'm talking about you will meet people some will be so sarcastic they don't don't bring boko here whatever you got in boko keep it there here we don't cry here all this cry 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 have you gone there to cry again you see can such person quench my fire what is the secret the first secret is that 
if it is fire within it is inaccessible to fire extinguisher around are we together with me if it is fire that is burning inside of you it is not available for anybody to easily put it out so the question I want to deal with here how will the fire be burning in you such that you can carry your fire as you go out and even if someone throws water at you your fire will keep burning inside of you the phrase in it is very important the word in means it is covered it is insulated it is embedded in your heart and it is burning within you you move among people you see those that are coming with extinguishers but because you are burning first and foremost from the inside it is difficult to blow it off so my first suggestion as we are following that law is that it should be burning where inside so this fire we are talking about is first of all inside fire fire that is inside your soul fire that is inside your spirit when I get to the point of how to do it I will be sharing with you the little principle I understood the principle of Tamo's flask the vacuum flask outside is normal but inside fire you can rub on it like this you think you are just carrying ordinary flask but if you open it the steam will hit your face how can I keep warm how can I keep hot hours upon hours upon hours and I'm dwelling in the midst of people who carry fire extinguishers it must first and foremost be an inside fire if this fire will last with you where did I say it must be burning first inside inside so in the above situation that I was painting when the madam has finished speaking the way she did you still gather your fire together to keep burning inside and then effortlessly you find a, sh a word to handle the matter and continue with your fire still intact and burning however those who do not know how to keep the fire burning within may say why do you talk to me like that are you a devil eh? you know I've just come down from the place of prayer what has vegetable oil to do with me I'm coming from from above and you are talking of vegetable oil get out what is that brother doing now talk to me what is he doing now is quenching his own fire because when you get annoyed with your madam you know madam you will not keep quiet uh -huh. Uh -huh. man of God <laughs> what has vegetable work got to do with you uh -huh. so what has your stomach got to do with food <laughs> before you know it a discussion is going on I say hey, are you abusing me I said no no I'm only asking you what has your stomach got to do with food hey, husband didn't the Bible teach you that anybody that cannot provide for his own house is worse than an infidel how are you reading your Bible hey, all this pray 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 something let's face reality If God does not help you, you may remove your dress. <laughs> and then the fire is finished. By the time you go back to the place of prayer, I can only be here and say, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. 
Lord, your star, as I am with that, I beat my wife. I'm sorry. It's because she provoked me. She provoked me. Meanwhile, your fire has quenched. We are talking about how to maintain inner fire. Regardless of what others are doing. Maintaining unbroken relationship on your altar. Regardless of what people are doing. Whether they abuse you or they don't abuse you, it doesn't matter. You are more concerned about keeping the fire inside. Then the madam may say, I didn't know you are even ready to fight. But before you know, you will tactlessly scatter the fire. I'm talking about how to keep the fire burning inside, regardless of what happens outside. We will not be able to control the outside condition. And I want you to know that the fire I'm talking about is not environmental. You cannot control the outside. But you can regulate the fire inside. Am I correct? Eh? That's what I'm looking at. I want to be a man of God. Even if you put me anywhere. And sometimes I'm sitting in these mundane meetings that we used to do in those days. This one is talking. This one is talking. This one is talking. This one is talking. And I'm saying, Lord... I want an insulation. I need insulation that keeps my fire inside. That though we are talking ordinary mathematics, my heart is burning for God. Even though he has raised a very, very careless statement, it does not penetrate inside. I am keeping that unbroken walk with the Savior. It is possible to meet a pastor whose fire died long ago. And as he sees you, he knows that something is born inside of you. He sees you moving with a vision. He sees you moving by faith. And moving with serious sense of going to achieve something for God. This fireless pastor may likely call you aside and say, Brother, I was once young like you. There's nothing you are doing that we have not done before. I can't say you. To do what? Cool down. I can't say you not to overstretch yourself. You will know when you meet such people. They are always saying that spirituality it's not as serious as you are taking it. You will meet such people. Eli and the young boy Samuel presents to us an example. Samuel was lying down by the altar before the fire went out. That boy was maintaining the fire on the altar. But his own master had gone to lie down because his eyes were already waxing dim. When the Lord began to call Samuel, ignorantly he went to meet his master, but his master could not, could only tell him, go and do what? Lie down again. God knew that the young man did not know, so God called him the second time and called him the third time. The old man kept telling him, go and lie down again. It was only at the third time that this man said, maybe it is God calling you. If that voice comes again, just tell him, speak on, for a servant hear it. What do you think will have happened if at the third time the voice that caught Samuel did not come back? What will have happened if the voice said, I have gone twice to my master, and this time he only told me to lie down. There's no need to keep waking up. This voice will only keep wasting my time. What will have happened to brother Samuel? He will have missed what will have made him a prophet. 
dear brother dear sister i counsel you not to lie down remain awake remain alert to keep your fire burning within that's the first thing i want to say to you where should this fire be burning within you within you insist that it will be fire inside let us agree together that the fire that god is releasing first and foremost is releasing it into our hearts and it was born inside when it is burning inside it will radiate outside and please it is your immediate responsibility to keep it burning within fire in the fireplace i have watched how fire is kindled in the fireplace lighting a fire comes in stages when you first light your fire and the principal logs of wood in the fireplace are yet to catch the fire you don't expose it do you expose it what do you do Is that what you do you cover it a bit so that wind does not quench it is that what we do eh? yes this morning I wanted to light my gas cooker and I did my my stick of matches like that what did I do so that it doesn't quench I know you do that every day. Do you do that every day? Now, what I'm showing you, that's how to keep your fire. When your fire is small, it is not yet time to expose it to boisterous wind. When your fire is yet to catch the the wood it is your responsibility to do what cover it something is burning in your heart but before it has really taken root into every segment of your heart you're already out sharing it and you know what happens once you overexpose it it quenches by the time you are coming back the fire is dead when you are making fire a fire that will become a big a big fire it has stages and i'm dealing with the first stage the first stage at that point when you must protect your fire there is a stage you must not expose what is burning inside of you you must allow it to keep burning inside cover it as much as possible that is not the time to talk to anybody yet you are here building your fire do you understand eh? when your fire is just beginning that's not the time to expose it that's not the time to preach it that's not the time to tell everybody let it be burning inside when it has taken root inside and is burning and all the wood has been has cut it even if wind blows it can only make it bigger it cannot quench it again sometimes God shows you a vision of what he wants to use you to do or to accomplish it appears impossible because not many have done that before the first thing to do is not to go about talking about it if you talk about it there will be a thousand and one honest people who will ask you where you have ever seen such a thing being done before 
they will caution you not to be ambitious and not to let this thing blow your head because they have not understood it they are likely to quench it they say, I remember something began to break forth in my spirit talking about what God is going to do with my life that's the first time I'm having an understanding that God can use a man you know what I did I have not finished <laughs> I've just learned I'm learning I'm still learning what did I do? I jumped up. I quickly went to one of our bro, ah, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> God is going to move. Hallelujah. There's a worldwide ministry that God is going to release us into. When I finish, and he was a very soft spoken man. He said, Brother Gbile. Thinkest thou of a big thing? Thinkest thou not? Let us humble ourselves. Let us not be claiming that we are going to do something. Be careful so that pride does not finish you that's how the other brother said he was going to do something and he has he has become so arrogant go and cool down ah! when i went back to my room you know the zeal with which i went out had quenched i knelt and said god god you know god asked me a question who told you to go and tell him? I thought that you told me to go. He said, who, did I tell you to tell him? Did I not see him on ground before I came to talk to you? Next time when I talk something to you, do what? Keep it in your heart. Do you remember Sister Mary, the mother of Jesus? When the angel finished talking to her, what the Bible said? And she kept this thing in her heart. That's how to keep the fire burning inside. There's a time when your fire does not need to be spoken about. Because brothers that are honest, but because they simply cannot imagine what you are talking about, they are quick to quench it permit me to emphasize this again as soon as fire is kindled in your heart and it begins to burn insulate it first from the environment until it has gained ground and can no longer be quenched easily there's coming a time when by the grace of God that fire will have burned through into your life. And except somebody kills you, it cannot be quenched. That is how it is. The inner fire comes first before the outer burning. Do you understand that? What did I say comes first? The inner fire. Let it be like that. Let your fire proceed from inside until it has cut all the all the embers of your heart. Let it remain. When it breaks forth, it will be difficult for anybody to quench it. The mistake young people usually make is that when they catch a little fire on a small stick they go about making so much noise about it before they return everything 
is finished fire is good fire is exciting but do not let it excite you until it has become a big burning fire build your fire let me tell somebody by your side say build your fire but where must you begin begin from the inside this god kind of fire always begins from inside to protect it from adverse winds of unbelief winds of despise and persecution i don't think i have ever failed to tell you something that will have quenched my fire when makodi airport used to walk and there used to be a flight to lagos i was unfortunate i use the word unfortunate to fly to lagos with another man of god and when the man of god i was sitting here and he noticed that are you brother Billy? Uh, from Kasnala, I say yes, sir. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I've been hearing about you. Can I sit with you? And for the next 55 minutes, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything the man said was that somebody carrying ice block, ice block and dropping it on my little warm plate is that right really? well done no. i learned that you are doing free conferences that you are gathering people and feeding them Abi? and that you are sending them to their churches is that not what you are doing I said, well, that's what we are trying to do. He said, eh. <laughs> said, look at me very well. You know our ministry. We did that for years. It does not pay. There's no future in it. We did it. And we have stopped it. They will eat your food. They will go away. When your need comes, nobody will come back. Ah. And he was talking to me so passionately. As if he really loves me. He said when he heard that that's the kind of thing I was doing. He thought it was his responsibility to come and tell me. And that it was this opportunity that day that I was on the flight with him. You know, no matter how I explain, God told me, that, can God tell you better than what God to our general of us here? Eh. When were you born again? That you say God told you something. We have been doing this since early 70s. Before we realize that it's a useless thing. Hey. He talked. When I realized that I cannot say anything to counteract what he's saying, you know what I decided to do? <laughs> you know, I didn't know when I did that because I felt that I better protect my heart. So I thought that what he said is entering my chest, so I did like this. Are you feeling cold? I said, no, no, sir, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> You know they used to put AC and you turn it on. He said, Is the AC too much for you? He didn't know that it was the AC <laughs> that is transferring cold to my spirit. So I started praying quietly. I said, Father, deliver me from this man. 
deliver me from this man lord deliver me oh god deliver me don't let what is there enter my head because i know you called me i know you told me what to do that they stop doing it does not mean that you have not led me what he didn't know is that god told me that this what he told this man to do that they have stopped doing and god told me what made them to stop and he was telling me that but his concern for the body of christ is what he wants me to live for ah by the time we we departed he gave me his card he said i should call him ah me to call him. <laughs> never mm -mm. i ran as if i was escaping from a cage i find it you know you know when the bible say uh, keeping your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost eh? i went somewhere i i just started speaking in tongues i just spoke in tongues spoken tongues i don't know what i was saying i was just warming up my soul again brother it's not every friend you can keep when god is causing fire to break forth in your heart it's not every man you see on the road that has something with which to find it to flame majority of people what is in their mouth is carbon dioxide they don't blow oxygen what do they blow and what is carbon dioxide fire extinguishers i beg you in the name of jesus christ keep preserve the fire inside your heart let it keep burning inside when god wants to begin to give you stronger trust to affect people it usually begins from within a stronger trust usually begins with a little fire of revelation inside that you must gather some wood around it it must burn and as it is burning you then you can fetch out of that fire to kindle other fires while your own still remains burning woe unto that man who only has one stick burning and withdraws that stick from his fireplace to carry it about when that fire quenches he may not find another fireplace to kindle it beloved brothers and sisters take time to do what to build the fire inside continuously walking on it and keep it burning take your time to pray and say to the lord lord this kind of insight you are granting me how can i understand more of it as you keep praying the fire will keep burning praise the lord can we talk quickly about fire extinguishers don't be in a hurry to meet fire extinguishers did you hear me don't be in a hurry to meet fire extinguishers don't be in a hurry to meet brothers and even preachers who are now extinguished themselves who no longer expect repentance when they preach they have agreed that it's not every time a minister preaches that somebody should repent or turn to god their fire died they have also convinced themselves that they are on the pulpit mainly to encourage and to motivate whereas your own cry may be to see conversion of souls and obedience to god's demands every week on your pulpit that is not their own desire anymore it may cancel you that since you are not called to be an evangelist 
Only evangelists can preach and people will be saved every time. These are fire extinguishers. What do I want you to do? Keep away from them. Don't fight them because they will, they will deal with you. Don't argue with them. They have too much knowledge to quench you. What do you do? What do you do? Can I advise you what to do? You greet them from, I say, ah, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. God bless you, sir. Ekushelua, sir. Amen. And you run away. <laughs> keep a good distance. Don't keep wrong company with those who, every time they hear you speaking about the faith that God is asking you, they always say, eh, eh. Don't let people push you into a problem. Look before you leap. And when they want it to sound as if it's a, a, a serious wisdom, they will deepen their voice. Say, brother, be careful. Please keep a safe distance. If I go near a man, and every time I go near him, my temperature drops, you know what I do? I stay away. Ah, but I believe we, don't, we have not seen yes. Ah, yes, sir, I, was, I was just busy. I'm not telling lie. I'm busy. I'm busy praying. I'm busy not turning my fire. Abby, you don't know what has happened to me. <laughs> when I came to this place first, and I knew this is what God wanted me to pour my life into, and I'm, and I'm pursuing it. One time I traveled to Ibadan. Because Ibadan is where I have all my old friends and acquaintances and all of that. I went to Ibadan. And I met a few of them and said, what's that? Bile, where are you? Ah, I'm in Benue State. Benue State. Close me. What are you doing there? Eh? That I want TV. You know there's a there's a a a, a, a tribal pride. Tribal pride. The way he spoke, as if the thief people are not human beings. These are people that I came to love with all my heart. They're the only friends I have now. Ah! Say, eh? Don't stay too long in that place so before you become useless. Come back, come back. This is where things are happening. God is moving here. Come back here, come back here. Hmm. Which road do you normally even take to that place? <laughs> ah! You listen to me, Bad company corrupts good manners. Stop moving with this kind. When else you come, don't go near them. I remember one night, one day I went and God said, Preserve your fire. So I just asked one of the brothers who was my disciple then. I said, give me the key to your room. I'm going to spend the next few days there. You may not know what I was doing. I was preserving my fire. Because the truth of the matter is that there was nothing I can show them. One brother wrote me a letter. Ah, that letter almost finished me. He said, Bragbile, tell me exactly what you are doing in Benue State. Why you choose to waste away? And we were here doing village work together. You are our leader. And you disappear like a smoke. And you know we have started a way big work now. Brother so and so had been ordained. is now Reverend this. You know everything he was saying as an achievement, 
they were nauseating to me when i read that letter ah my head almost turned god said put that letter aside face me i didn't reply but you don't know what happened it was last year last year after about 32 years that i was invited to a meeting to preach to a group of people and i saw him i saw him but because this time the organization they are so overwhelmed that Abraham is going to come ah, yeah. we have been looking for him for five years ah, thank God he will come everybody was running up and down to receive this brother Gile. but this was that brother so when I saw him and I said I called him by his name ah he said Abraham Gile, Everybody has been looking for you, talking about you. In fact, I learned that things are broken forth in Boko. Even my wife even came the other time. My daughter also came. They came back with wonderful report. Ah, we thank God, though. Thank God for your obedience. Aha. My brother. Keep a safe distance from fire extinguishers. If you keep your fire burning, they will still come and get a little of that fire tomorrow. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire extinguishers may tell you, don't be ambitious. Don't try to do what only God can do. If God likes, he can say so. If he doesn't like, that is his business. Brother, don't kill yourself. Preach your message. If you like to repent, let them repent. If they don't like, go and lie down. Don't make life difficult for yourself, Joe. Who is talking there? Fire extinguishers. He may appear to speak theologically appealing to some few bible verses that he has read out of context such people are fire extinguishers he will preach you out of your fire they will make you feel that you can actually live without fire if you stay around him for long he may even cancel you to copy him say see me that's how i that's how i live my own life I just go quietly like that I don't offend anybody if a church member is proving difficult I beg him I tell him that he should not worry I don't try to insist on any Bible verse or anybody I just tell him that whatever he can do he should do it fire extinguishers if you decide to take time to fast and pray for three days with one singular request crying Lord I want to see revival everywhere around me. I want to see sinners repent and saints challenge to obey God. Lord, give me a flaming tongue and cause my words to affect people. This fire extinguishing brother or preacher may hear you and say, Is that what you are fasting and praying about? If you do not have anything serious to fast about, better don't kill yourself. You keep fasting like this, you will have ulcer. Fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers. They may kill your fasting life because theirs are already dead. Therefore, let your fire be burning. Where? Inside. It is better for people to discover the fire. Not because you talk about it or display it, but because it has begun to burn them verse 10 and the priest shall put on his linen garment 
and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh and take up the ashes which the fire has consumed with the burnt offering on the altar and he shall put them beside the altar we're looking at that next instruction we have finished verse 9 now take up the ashes of past burning from the fire now we are saying that this is a law and we are looking at very technical instructions that God is allowing us to quickly touch and what is it now verse 9 ended by saying the fire should be burning in it we say it is inside fire but definitely when fire has burnt normally if you are using firewood what does he do he produces ashes can somebody explain to me what is an ash what is ashes eh? they are the result of burning they are the firewood that have been burnt they are the leftovers am i correct let me now ask can burnt ashes produce fresh fire do you know that when i talk about fire extinguishers and i dealt with human beings that could be fire extinguishers there's another fire extinguisher which is the ashes the past result of your past burning they are the greatest extinguishers of fresh fire i want to pray that god will give you understanding about what this imply before we begin to apply it let's try to understand what does it mean i know that those of us that are used to making firewood when you continue to burn as the fire is burning and the wood is getting short ashes is increasing and the space where you are pushing the fire is getting filled up normally what do you do you pack it out you pack ashes out the reason is because what has been burnt cannot burn again what has been consumed does not have any capacity to kindle fresh fire anymore so we saw the holy spirit giving very meticulous instruction and the first instruction i'm seeing there is that the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches and he will take up the ashes which the fire has consumed with burnt offering on the altar and he shall put them beside the altar because burnt ashes can never make a fresh fire don't fill your fireplace with the ashes of your past burning those ashes they are the testimony of your past life am i correct that what the fire has done if you allow that to fill the place you may think that you are all right but you don't have fresh fire anymore ashes simply put are already consumed wood that cannot be burnt anymore 
ashes are no longer inflammable they cannot burn they cannot support burning ashes then are the very good fire extinguishers anytime you look for the fire be great one of their very very important instrument for quenching fire is ashes and if they dissolve it in water it produces the kind of gas that once it is released just finishes the fire I want to pray that you will not quench this fire by going up and down with old stories our old stories are useful but not in our fireplace we can give testimonials of many years ago but not in our fireplace not in the altar we must pack it aside we will put it beside so that the altar itself is not clogged with our old experience what i need is something fresh i don't want to be old storyteller i want anything every day fire fresh coming from the lord what the fire service men employ in the water that they carry about is the old ashes is a carbon that they have now compounded so when water is not even available to quench fire you know sometimes we use sand am i correct eh? you know why we use sand sand is not combustible and sand does not support fire so when you throw sand there chua, since the, the fire couldn't cross it will die but sand can even be better at least it can warm it can conduct but ashes is the best throw ashes on any fire in another few minutes what happened to it it must quench it is very interesting to discover that you can also quench fire with ashes when you throw in ashes into burning fire the flames die out within minutes why because even though burnt ashes is a residue of your past burnings it has no capacity to be consumed again instead it turns around to consume your fire this is why god has now instituted it as a law in order to keep your fire fresh you must learn to pack out the burnt ashes remove the past burning from your fireplace carry the ashes out and put them somewhere behind the altar burnt ashes must not be on your altar if you do not want to quench your fire what could burnt ashes be in our own experience as believers and ministers what could it be i'm looking for the continuation of that now mom thank you very much okay so i better read from the book thank you so you need a help meet for your life isn't it those of you that are not married pray pray well if you have a fire extinguisher of a wife as i call it say we think concern me about that you are the one who know what you are saying don't call me praise the lord burnt ashes are the results of your past fires 
they are the testimonies of your past exploits every man who is carrying a burning fire will always have results those results are the ashes the miracles that happened two years ago the way people fell under the anointing when you preached that message last week all of this they are the ashes of your fireplace what bothers me is how many of us spend so much time decorating burnt ashes carrying burnt ashes on our heads these are things that cannot be consumed by fire anymore anyone puts them in the fireplace they will rather quench the fire for you to progress with fire what the fire has achieved in time past what must we do to it pack it aside but Paul said forgetting those things that are past men of old who progressively moved on with God were men who knew how to put behind them their past burning but there are technicalities which we need to share in handling past testimonies and past ministerial achievements before I go from this point can I find out do you understand eh? that now in order to maintain your fire and in order to keep it burning all right sorry please it's such a very confusing situation here the pages are not um, arranged properly where you have page 20 is supposed to be page 13 or something and um, yes page 20 is page 13 page 14 remains page 14 15 remains 15 and uh, it's, it's not aligned properly. I think we should just listen for now and after the meeting it may have to, you will have to rearrange it. Just, just listen. You will be able to get it. Praise the Lord. Thank you ma'am. So do you understand? So that we don't chase two birds and catch none. So let's leave the paper aside and let's go ahead with what we are dealing with. When we finish, what she started doing, she will let me do it. She will now give you the alignment of pages so that we can rearrange it. Even if we are going to cut them and now pin them, you will do it by yourself by God's grace. Amen. So can I count on you now to concentrate and listen to what we have to do I said for you to make progress with this fire that God is kindling in our lives you must know how to handle the ashes when God begins to release fire on your life there will be results there will be testimonies good things will happen you will preach somewhere and somebody will be healed but one of the mistakes that has quenched fire is when you now carry those burnt ashes and it is what you are advertising it is what you are robbing your life with no more the power of God that is at work in you gradually your fire will quench your ministry will become empty and the freshness of the glory that God wants to keep releasing so sometimes when I see but unfortunately many preachers think 
that when they push the testimony of miracles and they demonstrated the ashes of their past money they think that they are using that to encourage you to believe they don't know actually that they are quietly entering a routine that does not allow spontaneity of the Holy Spirit at work again the biblical instruction is that the priest the man of God shall put on his linen garment and his fine linen breeches shall he put on his flesh and take up the ashes which the fire has consumed with a burnt offering on the altar and he will put them beside the altar and he shall put off his garment and put on other garments and carry for the ashes outside the camp unto a clean place let me note the note that I have made before I come to discuss that brothers what you did two years ago as powerful as it was then what is it now ashes it's burnt already you cannot burn with it anymore if you bring it back to your fireplace two things will happen to quench your fire and then the dust particles may enter your eyes has any of you had the problem of particles of ashes entering your eyes before who has had that experience before let me see your hand aha what was your experience sister stand up give her the microphone when ashes enter somebody's eyes what is the experience it occluded my vision and it was peppery it was peppery yes very painful yes and your eyes so you won't see for a long time yes and if that happens regularly let me tell you why um, dr tokula is here you will have been the best person to come and give us a lecture on how to pro pro protect your eyes if a sand enter your eyes or a small particle of wood it is easier to remove you know why it does not dissolve you can do like this and the thing will come out but when it's a particle of burnt ashes it enters as if it is vaseline you hear me it will just do lebe <laughs> the more you want to wash it the more you are rubbing it in you can't see and it will be peppering your eyes don't kill your vision with your past stories don't blur your vision with the dust particles of your past burnt ashes there is nothing that makes someone blind faster than particles of burnt ashes it does not only stop your fire it blocks your vision it does not allow you to see where you are going anymore it keeps you stagnant because it has blinded you many revivers have stopped because of this thing many great preachers they have become empty storytellers because they have allowed it to come in front of them rather than leave it beside for a man to maintain fresh fire he must learn to pack out his past experiences his past testimonies his past exploits his past achievements and even his past failures these are all the ashes that we must pack aside taken out of the altar 
and let us keep them beside the altar as we read in verse 10. The priest is instructed to put on his linen garment and his linen trousers. Do you know what God is dealing with here? Do not be bare-chested when packing out your ashes. Again, I had discovered that if you are bare-chested when you are packing out ashes, and ashes falls on your body when you are sweating, excuse me, how easy it is for you to bath and it will clean. Do you know that number one, it does not even allow soap to foam. The more you want to rub it, it will just be entering your skin. If you want to last in the work of God, please don't allow past achievements past bunny to cover you when we want to deal with testimonies let's do it in such a way that it does not stick to our personality because we are not the one who did it who did it is the lord please don't take the glory praise the lord it must be a deliberate spiritual step to pack out your past body it must be a premeditated effort it will take consecration to do it it takes holiness of heart to pack out one's past body i think it is not an easy thing to do when packing out your past ashes you are on duty brothers you are doing it because it is part of God's requirement to keep you burning, forgetting the past. When you are doing it, you are still on duty because anything to do to maintain your fire and keep it fresh is what God will have you do. Do not let the ashes stick to your naked body, I said. It is difficult to wash off. Even the flesh, the fresh fire that purges a man, cannot easily remove it. You know why? It cannot burn again. It does not easily melt because no fire can deal with it again. Past experiences of many of us makes us very, very immune to the Word of God. The Word of God that is piercing the heart of others. It doesn't touch you again. Say, yes, we did that before. When somebody says, let us open our Bibles to Mark chapter 11. Because in the past, you have used Mark 11, 24. So you shall say to a mountain and it shall be removed. So you will not even care to open the Bible. Say what does he want to say that we don't know? You will say to a mountain, I remember in 1983 when we went for a crusade. It was that passage. I quoted and I confronted something that looked like a big mountain and said, Move! I said, Move! And as I said, Move! The Spirit just. Hallelujah! He's no more ready to listen to fresh instruction past ashes has started sticking to his body it's no more available for God to speak to him you hear him say okay okay I already know that before 
every time God tells him to move and do something, he says to where? We did this thing before. Look at the ashes of my body. That's what has killed and quenched several brothers who could have been going further with God in a mighty move of the Spirit. These ashes are neither saints. I want you to please hear me. Ashes, they are not never, they are not necessarily saints. They are not wrong behavior. They may actually be God's good works that were done through one slide. And it becomes difficult to remove because it was brought by God in the first place. So even the fire that purges does not purge these burnt ashes because they cannot get burnt. Past achievements that enters the heart and beclouds the mind is one of the things that destroys great men of God. It is one of the very subtle things that destroy fire. If your sense of importance enters into your heart, then it means that what God did through you in years past has talked to your spirit so much that I cannot allow you to have fresh appetite for new fire. This is why God said, let the priest wear his linen garment. In many ecclesiastical traditions, and if you are from Anglican, from Methodist, from the African church, from the uh, even the Equa nowadays, many ecclesiastical traditions, including Catholic, a fully dressed priest wears three layers. The first one is tight and it sticks to the body. The second one is the regalia. And the third one is the linen. It is the one that does not allow any wrong thing to touch you. And even if ashes fell on it, all you do is to shake it off and you continue your ministry. But if the ashes are allowed to penetrate into your flesh, the flesh will hold it and the fire that will have cleansed you cannot burn it as the ashes can no longer burn. It takes serious spiritual consecration to decide in your heart, I will not let my past achievement for God enter my heart. Even if people are talking about me, and once God begins to use you, they will talk. They will likely say, oh, have you seen this man? Something great always happens whenever he speaks. Make sure that such talks do not get past your linen garment. Do not let it enter you. Do not let people praise you to your death. May God help you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you again, are you following? Why are we doing this meticulous instruction? Is because the fire has come and in one year there will be burnt ashes behind you in the name of Jesus Christ you go out as you are raising disciples as you are preaching as you are praying God will honor his word God will answer prayers miracles will happen People will come and say, ah, when you prayed, this is what happened to me. We cannot avoid ashes. There must be ashes when fire has burnt. And I'm ready for ashes again. Because as we are moving with God, there will always be evidence of his work in our lives. But these evidences of his past work must never stick to our body. It must not be cloud us. It must not contaminate our own personal consecration to God. And I want to beg you, don't quench your fire too quickly. You are too young to die. Did you hear me? I say you are too young to quench. How far have you gone? How many years have you served God? that you want to quench now what is it that you have accomplished 
that you are now planning for your own personal downfall may god help us in the name of jesus christ there are many who have become unteachable unreachable like that today simply because their ashes have entered their hearts they keep talking about what they did and what they used to be and they have evidence they have the testimonies and possibly they have the photographs there's a way to undo your testimonies and all the dangerous photographs of past miracles of god in our lives keep them out of your eyes and out of your mind when you prayed for the cripple and he got well and you ordered photographs to be taken they become dangerous weak points to your continuous fire you make it easy for your past achievements that are already looking for a way into your spirit to so do please be careful did i say you should not take photographs eh? i've not said so but if photographs will put you in trouble why don't you put it aside if photograph is not just a record if it will become something that will not let your heart flow again can i beg you you can make do without it and serve god let there be many many more miracles even if they are not recorded let it be standing and speaking on your behalf may god help us in the name of jesus christ and in the future when there's no more fire to heal the sick or the cripple you will likely put that on your poster when the cripples come you there's no more fire to heal them you may blow the past ashes on their faces yet burnt ashes cannot burn anymore i pray the holy spirit to help you have a clear understanding amen god is interested in our progress this is why he's showing us this let me take you back again we're reading that verse it said let him put on let him put on upon his flesh did you see it and the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches shall he put on upon what his flesh the bible is very emphatic upon his flesh let me say this mr flesh is looking for ashes no matter how many years you have been victorious over mr flesh you must wear something on it otherwise it will betray you eh? the apostle said i keep my body how under even if you overcame pride over a long period of time say for 20 years god has delivered you from pride do not think you can never be tempted with pride again put linen on it so that it does not find the flesh to stick to this is very important brothers and sisters some great men that were mightily used of god ended up as false prophets because burnt ashes stuck to their flesh you need to speak definitely to god over this matter and i wish you would say lord i will not lose my fire because of my past burning i will not let the miracles that will come through this fire enter my head so that i can travel with you for a long time please help me lord did you understand that kind of prayer nothing must come between my soul and the savior not even the good works he used me to do i will not be glory in the past achievement when my master has moved away permit me to 
draw conclusions on this. Do not fill your fireplace with ashes of past experiences or testimonies. They are good in another place, but definitely not on your altar. There's a place to keep your ashes out of sight, out of memory. Your past burning may be so glorious, but today they are mere ashes. Forget the past. Press on for what lies ahead of you. If you pack them out, you will discover that you can even make a greater fire for God in your generation. I pray that your past will not become your climax in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, my master, did it. The Bible recorded in John 4 that in Judea, Jesus baptized more people than John. Many people were coming to him and they were beginning to sing praises around him. But Jesus stood up and declared, I must go. He was going to Samaria to make fresh fire. Most times, it is the men who have benefited from your past body that will want to crown you with it. Be careful. They tried it on Jesus. What did my master do? He ran away. If you see anybody bringing your past ashes to spray on you, don't allow it. Run away from praises in order to keep your fire fresh. Run away from those who sing your praise in order to last. Always leave your ashes behind. Press on with fresh wood. Then you will continue to see fresh flames breaking forth on your life and on your ministry. Let's look at that verse 11. All of you turn to verse 11. Where's my reader? I want the reader, also the NIV reader, to read verse 11 for me. Read King James and read NIV. Let's see how it sounds. And he shall put off his garments. Yes. And put on other garments. He put on other garments. And carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. He will carry forth the ashes without the camp that is outside the camp unto a clean place. NIV. Then he is to take off these clothes and put on others and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. There's a place that is ceremonially clean for our past ministry results. This is another technical aspect on how to deal with our ashes. Does God have a place for our testimonies? Yes. Does God not have a place for your past experiences? He does. There is a clean place. And I'm happy that the Bible calls it a clean place. There's a clean place where you keep your past testimonies. And you will not be messed up. But where is such a place? First of all, where is it? Outside the camp. Outside the camp, quietly and deliberately, push your testimony out of sight. Outside focus and out of consideration of fresh assignments. Do not keep reminding people what God has done through you. Do not use your past testimony within the camp. Never praise yourself. Be the one to arrange it out of reckoning within the camp. Let men only come across your past body. The testimonies of your life outside the camp. Let the people outside the camp touch your ashes and ask, Whose body produced these ashes? Oh, where can we meet him? And let them be told, well, only inside the camp. 
let others unbelievers or even the generation coming behind let them be the ones to touch your testimonies they will keep you safe for a long time brothers i pray you are hearing me very well are you hearing me a situation where your posters is filled with your life-size photograph pointing to testimony of many years is not good for your soul doesn't help you to tremble again it gives you a sense of expertise and that's what does the cry for mercy in the heart of many brothers this revival is going to be is going to be great it's going to spread all over the nations and it's going to carry character the character of christ the simplicity of christ the humility of christ none of us will become the object of attraction the lord will be the center of attraction and all the works that god will be walking through us it shall never be in front of us it shall always be behind so that we can press on onto higher ground may god help us in the name of jesus christ but if you carry your ashes and keep it inside the camp again you will quench your fire and also disabled people within the camp who will have assisted you to burn because they will be too occupied talking about your ashes friend there's a clean place for your past burning outside the camp let those who are outside the camp be the ones playing with it and talking about it be humble and carry it out yourself don't leave it to others to pack it for you your disciples and loyalists they will not pack it out to they will most likely be louding and extolling you for these ashes they love and respect you too much to cancel you to leave those things behind you for others to gain strength and boldness to pack it out for you they may mean that either they have become envious or disrespectful of you but if you are the one who carried it out yourself and went and kept it outside the camp nobody can rob you of it it will always be your testimony praise the lord but how should we pack out your testimony and he shall put off his garment and put on another garment this means when packing it out of the sanctuary you should put off your ministerial garment and put on your own garment put off the ministerial aura and insist on becoming ordinary within the camp god wants you to be ordinary brother are you hearing me god wants you to remain simple he wants you to be humble about it so that you can pack it out before they identify that you are the one if you attempt to carry it out in your official ministerial position even your colleagues and subordinates they may not allow you to do so they may likely insist no no the ashes are for us don't pack them out we like to keep them here as a memorial and use them for anniversary ceremonies when they do that they help to quench your own fire it will make you stagnant the holy spirit says to you this afternoon let him put on other garments let him be ordinary about it no fanfare so that no eyebrow is raised 
when dealing with your testimonies act as an ordinary Christian you may be powerful and anointed you may be a man that God is using at the altar but now that you are going outside the camp to drop this thing in a clean place you must become an ordinary brother people will certainly be looking at you with amazement do as Peter did when he said why are you looking at us as if it was by our power or by our holiness I'm dealing with how to handle your testimony are you hearing me how to handle what God does through you you are an ordinary brother tear your clothes let people see that it's not about you this will help you to last long when you are handling your testimony you must become ordinary you must not spiritualize it otherwise you become the next idol that men will worship and that may provoke God himself to release another fire from heaven to quench your fire because his glory he will not share with no man when you pray for a woman that has been barren for 10 years and she becomes pregnant there is the temptation to stand on the altar and call her out to tell the people what God actually the man of God did for her be careful are you hearing me how many of you are hearing me very well that when God will begin to manifest through your life you will not touch the glory always be ready to say it's not my holiness and it's not by my power not even by my prayer it is God when you do this you will last long with your fire in fact God will be happy to add more wood to your fire greater miracles will be done by your hands when you keep it outside the camp I want to again repeat God has a place for all he has done in your life in time past and it is a clean place do not put your testimony in a wrong place it will hinder your body it will blow on your face and impair your vision carry it away from the altar remove your mysterious garment as you carry away the ashes of past burning onto its own place do not use that as a basis for further ministry every ministry is fresh from God every time you stand up to pray it is a fresh thing it's not a continuation of what happened last month if God does not move this week nothing will happen always come fresh so that God can deal with you afresh I'm trusting God that these instructions are not cumbersome God will make it a guidepost for your journey in the name of Jesus Christ I say your past ashes is not the basis of your future ministry the basis for ministry is your current relationship with God what I am with God today is the basis of what God can use me to do today God does not work on historical fact as I yes Raguli used to pray so let me keep using him God is requiring that you maintain a current continuous fresh relationship with God that's why for the first two days we are dealing with keeping your devotional life and this morning brother Farm also came talking about building an altar to tie down your encounters with God let it be current so that you can be current it is not what happened last year it is not what the Lord did through you then it is what you are presently with God pray that God will help you keep this rule it is a law it has been experimented over the years anybody who worked with it became great 
anyone who defaulted it became damaged do not stand on the platform of your past experience to preach or to push for a miracle it is not the ashes that burn a fresh wood it is fire that begets fire beware no matter how plenty the ashes are you can never roast meat with it your meat will fall there are only few things that burnt ashes can roast when it is still hot there are things like ordinary granites and pear do you know that pear eh? that uh, pear small pear that when you want to eat uh, corn and actually you don't even need to put fire you just need to hold it tightly for about five minutes in your hand what will happen it will cook that's what ashes can cook may god bless you may god give you an unquenchable hunger for fresh fire i pray that none of you will be satisfied with burnt ashes in the name of jesus christ Order. i want you to look at he said he shall put on shall put off his garment that verse 11 i'm going to verse 12 now and the fire upon the altar the fire upon the altar shall be what shall be burning in it it shall not be out it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it so now we are in verse 12 can you read verse 12 again and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings amen good news the fire on the altar must be kept burning the Never fire on the, on the altar, altar must be what kept burning must be kept burning and never allowed to go out and must not be allowed to go out every morning we're okay now keep the fire burning add wood to it every morning the good news man is still reading now read the fire on the altar must be kept burning and never go out every morning the priest shall put firewood on it arrange the burnt offering on it and burn out of the fellowship offering the fire must always be kept burning on the altar and never allowed to go out burn the fat on the offerings on the fellowship offering uh -huh. the fire must always be kept burning on the altar and never allowed to go out you have gone to verse 13 yes sir. isn't it yes sir verse 12 ended with the fat of the of fellowship, fellowship offering abby yes sir all right thank you now why have i asked him to read good news or niv is that i want you to catch the other understanding of the word peace offering it has to do with fellowship offering so let's go on reading our notes quickly your fire needs to be kept burning that's the first thing i want to note in that verse 12. it is not automatic for fire to remain fresh you will be the one to keep it so hey are we together some of you say well if it's the only ghost fire do i need to do anything about it the more you study the new testament the more you understand that god talked about how to tend the fire for example second timothy chapter 1 verse 6 it says steer up steer to flame the gift of the spirit that is in you 
you hear someone say quench not the spirit is dealing with it as fire so because the bible said the priests the priests shall burn wood upon it every morning it means that to keep our fire ever fervent that as we go out of this meeting now with the fire of the holy ghost that fell upon us it must not be allowed to die out you must not allow it to quench it must be kept burning it's not automatic that it will keep burning it has to be maintained so what are the instructions to keep it burning God said by adding wood to it once a month when money by money if you ask oh why did we spend the first two days when brother Dennis was teaching us about morning devotion to prayer and to the word of God is because these are simple practices that when your fire finally comes they are the practical practices that will keep you ever burning I think when we are preparing for MLR one young man one young brother here a disciple he saw me we were walking to clean up the place for our guests and he walked up to me I think he had just he just looked at me like this oh then he walked he walked to me said uncle can I ask you a question I said yes he said what is the secret of your keep going like this for many years I have wondered and I know he was going to bring out his phone to start recording the man of God <laughs> serving secrets unto perpetual anointing I told him I said there's nothing like that I said just simple thing abide in me and I in you the one who abides in me and my word abide in you the same bear much fruit you don't need to do anything other than these little little issues that I want to lay on you even when you become a big man of God you will never graduate from money by money firewood did you hear me money by money pushing of firewood on your fire don't let activities take that away from you unless you want to die young do not let one piece of wood finish burning before you look for another do not exhaust a particular revelation before you let God give you another do not exhaust a particular body in your spirit before you go to God again and say add more wood to my fire when wood finishes in a fire what happens to that fire it must go out so we want to now understand what are these firewood that you need to add money by money we are almost coming to the end of where we are going to stop the fresh wood of a prayer life your prayer life must be a fresh wood that you are pushing on your fire money by money be diligent to bring in fresh wood into your altar of burning what are these fresh woods if you have in a major experience a continuous burning even if for a short time you already know that there are certain things that normally keep your fire burning and the face of such is your prayer life every time you go to the presence of God there is something fresh there is a new revelation of God 
there's an aspect of God that you may suddenly discover which will add fresh wood to your fire when should you be doing this prayer life when money by money if God himself say money by money you can never be wiser than God when did Jesus have his own quiet time a great while before the money by money he has departed to a solitary place and there he prayed don't be too busy as to omit your quiet times don't let the ministry become so engaging that your private quiet time with God you are skipping it I know there are times that yes you cannot you cannot avoid it but let it be very very occasional commit yourself to it and say to God money by money early in the morning my son shall rise to thee holy 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 Merciful and mighty God in repassing blessed Trinity. Trinity. Early in the morning, my song shall rise to you. Number two, the fresh wood of revelation knowledge. The second thing is a fresh insight into the word of God you may have read the Bible more than seven times yet if you go to that same passage again with humility the same verse that you have been preaching on for 10 years or even more will suddenly become fresh to you again as it is breaking forth again it adds to your fire this must become your everyday habit you must add fresh wood of revelation from the Bible morning by morning my brother do not become too anointed as to boycott the place of spiritual fellowship with the Lord do not be so occupied as an itinerant evangelist or preacher as not to have time to have your quiet time you are going to die spiritually if you do that you must add fresh wood of new revelations to your fire every day as you are going I'm going to be praying for you that day by day this fire will be increasing this fire will keep burning and as you keep praying as you keep studying the word of God it will keep expanding and your area of influence will begin to increase in the name of Jesus Christ your fire can burn for years if the wood continues to be added to it number three fresh wood of meditation the third thing you need to add is the fresh wood of meditation you must keep your thoughts around your fire if you don't gather your thoughts around your fire it may quench because there's nothing for it to burn keep your thoughts thick around and about the fire God is kindling in your heart do not let anything dissipate your thoughts do not become a scattered man be concentrated let the thought of your heart become useful instrument for your fire as you meditate day and night you find that your heart is warm and you find that your spirit is ever ready to explode you can be driving but you do not let driving occupy your heart you can be involved with people but do not let them enter your heart keep your thoughts intact it 
is not everything you should be worried about brothers and sisters don't think you are brilliant by thinking about everything be selective on what you think about be deliberate on what you allow around your heart because the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life a man that keeps that want to keep his fire burning for a long time does not spend his thoughts on everything that comes his way it is not everybody who cries that he must run after you must be composed inside you cannot hear people talking I mean you can hear people talking but should not disturb your own equilibrium your thoughts should not be disturbed because if your thoughts are scattered there will be no oxygen again to support your body you notice that that oxygen is in inverted commas that to show that your, your thoughts that the fire carriers and burners that God wants you to keep I want to jump out of this I'm jumping because yesterday our brother spent time looking at how you can approach the word of God how you can get revelation from the word of God and I know that you can always read this section but if you don't know how to meditate the word will not break forth unto you so what is number four the fresh wood of fiery companions every morning burn wood in it another crucial wood you need to add to your fire is to keep company with people that can inspire you did you hear me keep company with men on fire don't keep company with those who have lost their fire when we were on campus there's a senior friend he works in the faculty he's, a, he's an administrative staff but he was a great man of prayer if you don't have two hours don't go to his office did you hear me if you branch in his office ah brother Billy, good morning how are you ah, how is the lord dealing with you ah, i hope god is blessing you let us pray let us pray when he grabs my hand <laughs> i will have to be begging god to release me from that hand because the fire of prayer is burning in this man he's praying he's praying say, oh father i thank you for black belay i thank you for black belay what i see about him ah, ah, oh god oh god oh god yeah, please help me. Ah, me i said what did you see about me and you are crying So I discovered that there are people that God places on your path to, 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 to pump your fire. When they are finished praying with me like that, two things normally happen. Apart from the fact that his prayer is going to be answered, I left him with challenge. The Holy Spirit said, you see now, you see now, you are not praying enough. So as even though I'm going for lecture, I say, Father, make me a prayer warrior. Like Brother Joshua. No, make me a prayer warrior. Oh God, he's firing me. So whenever I don't have lesson and I just want to enjoy prayer, you know what I do? I just go to the, I say, I just say I should come and greet you. Say, ah, Bragbile, you have time? Okay, okay, come, 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 come. <laughs> I 
I've seen a man who is so heavenly in his outlook. He prays so much that when he finishes, you will see his face shining. I say, ah, these are men I want to be like. So when we, when we were to wait, I told my wife, say, our, the chairman of our reception will be that man. I tell you, can I tell you what happened on my reception? <laughs> God said, he is going to come down. And that there will be no space for photograph. That he is the Lord is coming that he will take over. Uh-uh. And that everybody should eat before they come for reception. I have never seen that kind of thing before. But we obeyed. So we arranged food somewhere else. If you want to eat, please go there. When you finish, come for reception. I thought it was a joke. As we were to enter, we started a song. For the next one hour, nobody could stop it. Everybody was sweating, worshipping. By the time we came to the high table, and the chairman of reception took over. They just said he should do chairman's speech. <laughs> All the dignitaries that were waiting to be introduced, they were confused. <laughs> because the chairman just grabbed the microphone and said, Father! Father, in the name of Jesus! Thank you for this brother Gideon and sister Shade who are joined together today. Thank you before you want to use them. And he went on on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I think 30 minutes he has not finished this prayer. When he finished, he went prophesying. When he finished prophesying, he gave out a call. Come and see people trooping out in tears to repent. That's the end of our reception service. <laughs> oh. Keep company with men on fire. You need a companion of fiery brothers and sisters to keep you in shape. When I came to Kasina land, I started preaching about. I met another brother of blessed memory today. Then he used to be brother Pius Diggy. He's going to be with the Lord now. Ah! If there's anything I cherished, it was his prayer. His house was on my road to the college. So when I'm going, I said, let me just branch and greet Brapaios. If I get to Brapaios at 8 a.m., ah, say, Brapile, Brapile, oh, thank God, thank God. Oh, I'm an evangelist, I'm an evangelist. That's how he speaks. He said, can we just pray together? There's a burden in my heart. In fact, I just saw a demon. I saw a demon. A, a, a demon. Ah. <laughs> we will kneel down there praying for the next four hours. We have not finished. Keep company with men on fire. Don't keep moving with those who are just moving from one video clip to another video clip. They will not allow your fire to grow. They will not let you get to where you are going. When we need them praying like that, the Holy Spirit will bring a scripture. And as the scripture will open, I say, Brother Pius, there's a message, there's a word from the Lord. He said, yes, 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 yes. Let's get that first. Let's get that first. Then we'll pick it. I say, when, I, when we finish expanding, say, Father God, Father God, 
then we start again you don't feel hungry because you are up there but nowadays i see so many young people just drifting even when you are filled with the holy ghost there is nowhere to nurture your fire so when the bible said burn the fat of fellowship offering he meant fellowshipping with men of like passion look for those who have the same fire with you i was happy as i was uh, going back to sleep yesterday night i saw some of the brothers they joined hands together they started praying again for fire when i was coming this morning i saw another group of four brothers they joined their hands oh baraba, shanta, ba, 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 ba. i said god yes yes sir. that's the fire that's how it grows that's how you did it with us that's how we started something has started again and it will not quench in the name of jesus christ keep company with people that have fire with you move away from the company of those when you meet with them one hour you go back deflated he said do you know what sister rose was saying and sister rose is seeing brother jack and uh, you know they are talking but you know something is going wrong uh, the way sister rose was looking i know that uh, jack is beginning to do something and i saw sister cecilia around her <laughs> and uh, as they are moving like that me i know they me i know they me i know they <laughs> what kind of company is that it's a company of fire extinguishers move away go to where fire is that's where you get a correct husband that's where you get a correct wife are you hearing me god will help us in the name of jesus and even in listening to preachers listen to those who inspire you in the word of god nobody compares you to be listening to a man who only dismantles the fire in your heart it's not compulsory for you to be listening to junks and it's not compulsory for you to belong to something that does not in any way add to your fire if if you have to you go there but intact and as soon as you disappear go to where your fire can be kindled may god help you in the name of jesus christ don't keep company with those that are stagnated don't keep company with those that have been crippled move away from those who have lost their focus what is number five wood that you must add the wood of diligence and consistency he said it shall not be put out the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it that's diligence every morning anointing requires diligence genuine anointing requires deliberate hard work to tend it to keep it going you can progress there's no magic about it if you keep doing something daily god will bless you god will increase you god himself will add unto your life praise the lord even though we have spoken about you keeping company with those with correct fire yet there's another wisdom you must further learn and this is a continuous balance you must maintain receiving air from another does not mean abandoning your own there is orderliness in the body of fire there is a gradualism 
and a chronological way in which fire burns. There are things, each in their own timing and stages, that God has arranged in your life to burn gradually until it becomes a, conf a conflagration. Such a remain must not be disorganized or abandoned. Otherwise, you may only have ordinary smoke. Spiritually speaking, in order to keep burning, do not abandon your fire to follow another mighty fire of another one man of God somewhere. Perhaps because people are talking so much about him. Even when God uses a brother to inspire you, he has only helped to inspire your fire. You must not abandon what God is doing with your life. Praise the Lord. If you do that before you come back, your own fire will have died. And it may have died out and you may never be able to catch the other man's fire. Be consistent and patient with your fire. I don't have time to give you practical testimonies of how to be consistent and patient with your fire. How to remain what God wants you to be. It's a diligent thing not to change. I have gone to places and probably they say, probably, probably, there's something new that we are doing. I say, it's okay. But I have not tried that before. You can keep trying it. But for me, I'll keep at what God showed me to do. Consistency requires diligence. Please, Lord, don't let me abandon my fire in pursuance of another man. Help me to be consistent and be patient waiting for my fire to catch and to burn. Do not for any reason disorganize a burnt offering of your own fire. What of corporate fellowship? The wood of corporate fellowship. Why we talked about you having personal fire, keeping company with people of the same kind of fire. What of fellowship? The fellowship offering, like we have gathered like this. That you go for a, a meeting, a discipleship class, a discipleship meeting, where you can all pray, somebody gives exhortation, or we take a Bible study, and we are studying it together. It's a provision to keep your fire. But I want you to note that fellowship or communion of brethren will add to what is burning in you. Fellowship cannot create fire, but it can increase it. Praise the Lord. Eh? Fellowship may not create it, but it will increase it. A man of God should not be isolated. No matter the fire you carry as an individual, you need a common fireplace to enhance your burning. That big log of wood, fiercely burning now, will quickly dissipate and die off if it is removed from the fireplace and made to stand alone. So don't miss fellowship. Don't say, I've been highly anointed. I cannot listen to anybody. All the brothers around me, they know that no matter how I have gone and gone and gone, I'm always longing to come and sit down and allow even the young disciples to break the bread and I'll be taking my own note because there's something in the fellowship of the brethren that helps you to keep keeping your fire. Finally, verse 13. Verse 13. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. The fire shall what? Ever be burning upon the altar. And it shall never go out. If you follow all these principles, the fire, your fire, shall ever be burning upon the altar. 
you will never stagnate God will cause you to burn until you see God's face what an assurance do you desire to be a man or a woman of a fresh fire even after 20 years eh? 30 years and if Jesus started 50 years you desire to walk in an ever fresh anointing all the days of your life this is the way walk in it it is the sure way let me ask you to step into it right away I would ask you for the next few minutes to stand and commit yourself in the night which will be our commissioning night when God will begin to blow on our fire coals and sending us forth to go and shine and to burn there are fields to burn and you may not know the power of your fire until you go and touch something that can be burnt. Will you like to pray this afternoon and say, God, my fire shall ever be burning. It shall never go out. That is the, that's the bottom line of all I've been talking about. That's the conclusion of it. I want you to pray hold God's hand with me today cry to God the things that you have started with me the fire that I'm sensing within me sometimes that fire is appearing like a restlessness it's appearing like a body it is coming as if it is something you couldn't stop it it is not just for a little time it's going to burn for life it's going to burn forever and ever God wants it to keep burning let's pray about it and say Lord keep me on fire keep me ever burning help me to keep burning for you as you have started with me Cause this fire to go places. Brashito, please come. Let this fire break forth for me. Pray that all the tiredness, all the discouragement shall be consumed by this fire. And that you will last with this fire God will use this fire to kindle many other fires God said the fire shall be ever burning it shall never go out Pray, pray, please, please pray. Just pray. The fire is already here. It's burning already. It's burning already. Babash, barubas, ribas, karubas, sayaba, uribas, sayaka, ribas, marababas. Baru basaya raba baba, baru gaba sandala baya. Ruba, ruba sinda bakala baba 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 baba. Ah basai la kau raba basai la kau raba saya, bari basaya kuri baba baba. Bunuh raba sandari anda raba kaya dari alam bumi. 
Barra bagaza yege de liba bani ala ba kandari ala ba bari ala ba. Misoto yoga da liba goda liba gadori ala ba. Let's get to skaple kepi yando. Mariga liba bari ala ria bagaza gada ala ba bo. Let's get to skaple kepi yande. Rega de liga bori ama kasanda ala ba ya. Baskuria, 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 baba, basatiri kali baba, baraka soto lo baskali baba, maliske tuska pliki piyani, ah, buska, la buska, la buska, maluski li baba, barago soto piyani li baba ya kaba, brethren, can we pray? Just pray. Something is happening here. Maluke soto piyanda. This fire shall not quench. This fire shall not quench. No fire is in Guisha. Maluske Tosca play Kepi and the Liba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, Pastor. Roba Saka Yada Rababa. Roba Sayad. And a fire consume every consumable. He consume every sin, every iniquity. The fire that consume iniquity, that consume every sin. Maragobosa geda liba boya. Eragada yaga broga bagada liba bo. Leze de liga ganda liba bo. Meze gete liya laba bo liya ba. Ah, muskuria. Muskuria bo shika pa yada liba pa yaka pa liba liba ba. Uraga sata laba ba ya andre bege liba ba liya ba ba. Masoto yoga broga bagada laba ba. Maliske toska pleka pa yada liba ba ya. Uraga zagada liba ba. Yika zalagada liba ba. Yes, Lord, Masate Libaba, Lucasheta, Yababa, Yes, he consumed disease, he consumed affliction, he consumed every forces of darkness. The fire, Maluska Tosca, Pleke Biandi, yes, Lord. Maraga do yaga broga baga laba bo yezege de liba panda liba balaga da liba baya ah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus yes in Jesus name we pray. Yes, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we submit to this fire. We dedicate our life to this fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We are grateful, O Lord, that in our lifetime, you have allowed to experience another Pentecost. We agree together this afternoon, Lord, that this Pentecost will never be wasted. We agree together, O oh Lord, this afternoon, 
that this is the Pentecost that is going to usher him the king of kings and the lord of lord that is going to silence every atrocity in all over the nations of the world that is our belief this afternoon in the name of jesus that this one is going to bring about the prophecy that is going to usher in jesus Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you have decided to do in our day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To you be the glory and honor, praises and majesty. Even as we move with you in this end time, there's going to be an abundance of harvest. Souls will be swept into the kingdom of God. You will make our mouth fire and the heart of people shall be wooed. Wherever we go, in the name of Jesus, no one argue with fire fire will silence every argument in the name of jesus every problem every difficulty they will subdue to this fire in the name of jesus principalities will bow wickedness will bow atrocity they will bow Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word.